Hey everyone, it's Dr. Charlotte Hodges, and today I am gonna barbecue. Um, I'm looking a little rough right now. Um, I went for a walk today, and it, I went about four and a half miles. And while Collins and Margie are out at the grocery store, I thought I would get the barbecue pit ready to grill some steaks. I've had them marinating um, since yesterday. And then I actually just texted him to go ahead and pick up just a pack of chicken thighs. I'll put some little lemon pepper um, seasoning on them and I'll throw those on the pit too. We'll probably just have the steaks today, but then I can have the chicken for tomorrow. But since it doesn't take very long to cook the steaks on the pit, and it kind of takes a while, it's like a process to um, barbecue, I might as well use the um, um, barbecue in the heat to my advantage. So, if any of you are like me and are barbecue novices, don't feel bad. Um, what I wanna do is kinda go step by step over um, this whole barbecue process, okay? So, let's get going. All right, everybody. So, right here what we have is a charcoal chimney. And um, this thing has been invaluable for me. I used to always use match light, pardon me, match light um, charcoal, but then everything ended up just tasting like oil, and I really would rather my barbecue to taste like, well, the hickory or the chicory or whatever kind of um, wood that it says on the side of the bag. I also don't like to use lighter fluid because again, I don't want my meat to taste like lighter fluid. So this thing has been invaluable. And you just pick these up at like Home Depot, Amazon, Lowe's, wherever. Now, what it is, is if you look down here at the bottom, you'll end up putting in, you just crumple up some newspaper, and then on the top, you put all of your charcoal, and just pack it up. I also got these things called tumbleweeds. You just, again, get them wherever you bought your barbecue pit. And, um, I put those at the bottom and it also just helps to light everything and then you just light stick your um, your long lighter into the very bottom into those things and you start the um, of just lighting the paper now it can take about 15 minutes or so and if you can kind of see on the side see how you can see the charcoal it's nice and red and hot that's what you're trying to get to so it takes a little while up at the top, those charcoal, they're on fire. You do not want to use those just yet uh, because it'll end up just scorching your meat and not really cooking it. So it kind of gets hot from the bottom up. And so you just wait till those top coals look like these red hot ones. And then you end up dumping them. I use, I have these Check out Margie Reese Minnie Mouse table. That's my side table. I don't have a big fancy barbecue pit. These are fire safe gloves. Um, I just picked them up at the same place where I got my barbecue pit. And they protect my hands. That way, whenever I'm folding onto the side of the barbecue chimney or the charcoal chimney, I won't burn myself. All right. All right, I just wanna check and see how this is going. You can see some of the, the fire coming up, but my charcoal, they're still black. Oop. We want them to be nice and red and hot like those inside. So what I will do is I will just show you guys how I made my steak marinade. This will probably take another five, 10 minutes. This is kind of what I used for my steak marinade. Um, they all have tons of different marinades that are on the market. There is actually a really good rub that I used to get from Sir La Table, but um, I couldn't find it anymore, um, but there are tons that are out there. I actually get pretty simple. I'll just use some of that, uh, the spices of Montreal steak, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, some um, kosher salt. I really like that coarse salt and um, the coarse black pepper. And then whenever I'm doing my grilled chicken, I'll just use the, the salt, pepper, and then some lemon pepper seasoning. And then I also put in some Worcestershire and I just stick it in a big old Ziploc baggie and marinate them overnight if I can. Otherwise, if I can at least do it for 30, 40 minutes, that will at least um, give it a little bit of flavoring. And one little tip that I got from Bobby Flay, 
is right before you start to barbecue, what you wanna do is take your meat out of the fridge, because of course that's where I usually marinate my meat. Um, you wanna take it out of the fridge and actually let it get to room temperature. And at first I didn't understand why he did this, but it actually just helps with the cooking process. And so keep it out at room temperature. I have found that my steaks are much more flavorful. I'm able to cook them much more evenly and um, they're nice and tender whenever I um, cook them at room temperature. All right, everyone. So you know that your charcoal is ready. Once, of course, they're gonna be right at the bottom, but then on the top, once they're starting to get a little ashy. So that's right where my charcoal is. You can kind of see it, it's nice and ashy. And then I'm just gonna pour it in. I have these two little baskets that will hold all the charcoal. Um, now, you do, not, you do not have to have these little baskets at all. Um, I just do. Um, and then that way, if you want to move the charcoal around on your pit, my pit's round. So if you want to move them to the side, that way the middle part is just a little bit cooler, you can do that. Some people don't have these, they just put them up in a mound. That actually really doesn't matter, it's whatever your preference is. But for right now, I'm just having them all in the middle. So, I'll put my grill back on top. And then what you want to do is you want to take your lid, if you're using charcoal, and you want to preheat your pit. And so generally what I'll do is I just put the top on, I make sure that all the vents are open. That's how you can get a higher temperature. And uh, keep all the vents open, and then by the time I go inside to get my meat, usually it's about long enough for the temperature to get at. So for instance, right now, it is gradually getting into B. I mean, it's going up quick. I'm gonna move the camera in. You can see how it's going to 300. It's very quickly gonna get up to 400. And this is with the lid on. And typically what I like to do is whenever I'm cooking these steaks, I like to cook them between four and 500 degrees. I like mine cooked medium. And so that's about four to five minutes on each side or an internal temperature of 140 degrees. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is the lid off and put my steaks on the pit. Right now it's right at 450 degrees. Whenever I was selecting my pit, I particularly wanted one um, that had a temperature on top. It just makes it easier for me. I'm going to move some of these coals around because that's just how I like to do. So that y'all can see a little bit better. And I have put my steaks right on top. Now they're on the hottest portion of the uh, of the grill right now, but that's okay. I'm gonna come and flip them in just a minute so they can have some grill marks. All right, so they've been cooking for about five minutes on one side. So what I wanna do is just flip these bad boys over. And then, I'm actually gonna move them over to the side a little bit because they're getting pretty crispy and dark on the top and I just don't want it to be, I just don't want it to get burned. Yes! So, turn those over and we'll let them cook for about five more minutes. All right, so while the steaks are cooking, I'm gonna make some rice. We love rice with our steaks. And I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect rice you don't need a rice cooker, you don't need a crock pot, you don't need all this special stuff. Um, our favorite kind of rice to get is the basmati rice. Um, it's really flavorful, it has a nice texture. Jasmine rice is really good too. But of course you can always use any old kind of rice that you like. But the way I'm cooking it, make sure you don't use minute rice, so it will be nice and soggy. So regardless of what the package says, this works for me every time. You'll use 
one cup of rice, or, and you use one and three quarter cup of water. If you use that ratio every time, your rice will be fine. So the first thing you want to do is get the fire going. Of course, it's not going to want to go. Okay. And you'll get your water boiling. And I always like to add in just a little bit of butter. Do my rice. So we just like to get that to a bowl. Once it gets to a bowl, you'll add your rice, put it on the lid, and then turn the temperature down to low so that it's just thin. Okay, now that my water is boiling, this is how easy it is. You dump in the rice. Of course, I ended up having some liquid in this. So there's the rice that's stuck. You take your lid. Put it on your boiling rice and then you just turn the fire down to low so that it's at a low simmer. There you go, easy as that. You keep the lid on, you try not to check it, and in about 10 minutes or so you'll have perfectly cooked rice. Okay? Okay, it has now been five minutes on each side. I take the lid off. I'm gonna take my handy little cooking monitor and just see what the internal temperature is and see what I got. If it's up to 140, then we know that we're golden. It's going, it's going, 130. Is okay. Let me check this one. Let's see. Make it off. Back it off a little bit. Let's get this one in. Let's see if this one goes up to 140. All right, both of them up to 140. So they are now good to go. Let's just get them off the pit. And then what we want to do is we want to try to let them rest for about five, 10 minutes. That way they keep it all the nice juice. Okay, you can see that this is a nice little simmer. That's really where you want your rice to be. Um, not a full bowl, but a nice little simmer. Okay, I walked away from it and see how it's bubbling. This is way too high. Um, so you just walk away for a minute. So I'm going to put it down even more down to simmer and sometimes you can just let the lid off and that will take out a little bit of the heat as well. All right let's check our rice. I think it is just about done. It's nice and fluffy. I did take the lid off one time just to see um, how it was if I needed to cut down the heat a little bit more and it came out perfect. I'm gonna have a taste. It's perfect. I'm just gonna keep the heat on it a little bit and keep the lid on. Now Margie Ruth, she loves her broccoli. She's actually not a big fan of um, barbecue, so I'm making her some broccoli and now I am going to make her a quesadilla. Okay, so I've made a previous video on quesadillas, so this will be the down and dirty.
is just about to dig in. We're gonna say our blessing. She has discovered um, Caesar dressing. Do you like the Caesar dressing, baby? Oh yeah. So she got a little pre-made Caesar salad um, at the grocery store. Hang on one second, baby, we need to say the blessing. And now here are our, um, here's our weekend dinner, steak, broccoli, and rice. We are ready to dig and in. And on weekends, we have a sleepover. Yes, we do. Aren't weekends the best, baby? 